Welcome to our online experience at Landing Place Church. We're so glad you're here. Today we're starting a new series called Empowered by the Holy Spirit. If you're encouraged by this message, please like, share, and follow us online. Hey kids. Yeah? Max, hey, would you like to share with the kids where they can find their online experience? Yes, I would. You can find your online experience on the Facebook Kids Link page. Awesome, thanks Max. If you would like to connect or prayer, please click on the link provided and fill out the connection card. Enjoy the message. Bye. Some days, I just don't feel like I have what it takes. I feel like I'm out of control. I feel powerless. But you will receive power, power, power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. How do I get that kind of power? Well, welcome to episode one of a brand new series entitled Empowered. The date is March 15th, 1968, and you have been tasked with a monumental job. Your job is to clear a two mile tunnel through a massive mountain that is eventually going to become the Eisenhower Tunnel. Now, in order to accomplish this task, you have to choose between one of two tools provided to you to go through this mountain. One is a common, ordinary, everyday shovel. Now, a shovel's great. I mean, everybody knows how to use a shovel. But honestly, to go through a mountain two miles, it would take you the rest of your life <laughs> to use a shovel. Now, the other tool that you have to choose from is dynamite. Now, dynamite sounds way more exciting. It sounds way more powerful. But dynamite's also a little bit scary. I mean, we've all heard the stories of the 4th of July where people are blowing fingers off and hands off. And that's just firecrackers. I mean, who of us really knows how to navigate the power of dynamite without hurting ourselves or, or someone else. You know, this season that we've been in this last six months has just been filled with mountain-like challenges. And with the world turned upside down, we kind of feel like we're in a, a game of Jumanji and everybody's kind of wondering, what does October hold? God offers us dynamite power to work through our challenges. But honestly, a lot of us we settle for shovel power because it's, it's familiar. We know how to use it. It seems really, really safe. What is this kind of power that God offers? Well, this, this dynamite power we're going to learn today is the Holy Spirit. And it's really not an it, but it's, it's a Him. And I think the Holy Spirit is one of the most misunderstood concepts. It's one of the most mysterious concepts about God. And so we're going to spend the next four weeks talking about the Holy Spirit. Today, I want to look at really just three questions. Who is the Holy Spirit? What kind of power does God offer through the Holy Spirit? How do I tap into that power? Maybe one fourth question. Why does it matter to me? So our first question we want to look at today is this. Who is the Holy Spirit? Well, the short answer is the Holy Spirit is God. And I know this is a little confusing, but God exists in three forms. God the Father, the Creator, Jesus the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Sometimes it's referred to as the Trinity or a triune God. And, and God the Father, Jesus the Son, and the Holy Spirit, they're all God, but they, they have very different roles and different aspects in our lives. And they were all present from the very beginning of time. Uh, we look back to the creation story and, and, and God said, let us make man in our image. In other words, Jesus, the Holy Spirit, and God were all present at creation. Uh, and in the Old Testament, we see the Holy Spirit show up in very like cameo appearances in a movie. Um, 
Daniel and Elijah and Samson. We see the Holy Spirit come in, do something really supernatural in their lives, and then go away, kind of like a, a spotty internet signal. It, it's there and, and then it's just gone. Now, when Jesus came to earth, people were so excited because they got to see God in the flesh, like with a face and a name and a tangible, touchable representation of God. And for three years, Jesus' closest followers got to hang with him. And you can only imagine their disappointment after his death, burial, and resurrection when Jesus came to him and one day said, hey, guys, my mission on earth is complete. I came to earth and I did what I came to do, and that was to die for the sins of people. It's time for me to go back to heaven. It's time for me to, to rejoin my father. And they were devastated. They were like, oh, you can't leave Jesus. We, 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 we want to be with you. We want you to be with us. We, what are we going to do without you? And Jesus goes, no, 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 it's okay. And Jesus makes them this amazing promise that we find in John 14, verses 15 and 16. He said this, And I ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate who will never leave you. He is the Holy Spirit who leads into all truth. Now here's where it helps to go back to that original language that the New Testament was written in. It was Greek. The Greek word for advocate, because advocate's not a word we use a lot today, but the Greek word is paraclete. Now, that doesn't help us out a whole lot, but paraclete literally means someone who comes along beside us, an aid, a helper. Actually, in a legal sense, it means a defense attorney. It's kind of one of my, one of my favorite things. Now, unlike Jesus, who is limited, Jesus, Jesus could only be at one place, at one time with a specific group of people. He couldn't be everywhere at once. Jesus goes, look, this advocate that I'm sending to you, this paraclete I'm sending to you, for those who follow me is going to live inside you. He's going to go wherever you go. He's going to be with you at all times. This is an amazing upgrade, Jesus would say. Now, in John 16, 7, he goes on to explain a little bit more about this Holy Spirit that he's going to send. He says, look, but in fact, it's best for you that I go away. Because if I don't go, the advocate can't come. But if I do go away, then I'm going to send him to you. Jesus goes, look, this transition is one of the best things that's ever going to happen to you. I'm temporary among you. But the Holy Spirit, when he comes, he's always going to be with you. He is going to be permanent spiritual presence of God is going to be inside of you. Now, he promises one more thing. When the Holy Spirit comes, he's going to bring this amazing gift to you. And this is where it ties back to our opening scene and our opening story. And Acts 1.8 says this, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. Now, that leads us to our second question. Our first question is, who is the Holy Spirit? And now that we have a little better idea of who this Holy Spirit is, the next question we want to tackle is this. What power is available? When, when Jesus said, hey, I want you to wait because there's going to be power that comes on you. If you go back to the, the verse, the word power in Greek, that original language again, is dunamis. And dunamis is where we get our English word, dynamite. Now, I don't know if you know the history of dynamite. It was actually invented by a Swedish chemist uh, named Alfred Nobel. And uh, he invented it for the construction industry to blow through things like making the Eisenhower Tunnel. That was, the, that was the original purpose of dynamite power. But somewhere along the way in his lifetime, it got twisted around and it became a weapon of war and it became a weapon of destruction. And an interesting thing happened in his life. His brother passed away. But when the newspaper picked up the article, they actually thought it was Alfred who died, and they wrote his obituary. And so one day, Alfred is, is drinking coffee, probably, and opening up the, the daily paper, and he sees his own obituary. 
And the way it read was, Alfred Nobel, the inventor of dynamite, the most destructive power on the planet. And in his obituary, his legacy was going to become that he was, he was the inventor of this very, very destructive power. And he was so taken aback, as probably any of us would be reading our own obituary, so taken aback by the fact that, oh my gosh, this is going to be my legacy, that he changed the course of his life and he had made millions and millions and millions, and this is the 1800s, millions of dollars on dynamite. And he took his fortune and he said, I do not want to be remembered as the guy who used something so powerful for destruction. And he came up with the Nobel Peace Prize. And most of us, when we think of Nobel, we don't think about the negatives of dynamite. We think about him as the originator of the Nobel Peace Prize and, and that this was a philanthropist. And he changed his life. And I think that's a great story because it indicates that when something is powerful, as the Holy Spirit is given to us, it can be used for really good things and it can be used for amazing things. But we have to be careful because it can also be misused and it can be destructive in some cases if it's, if it's steered in the wrong direction or used or misapplied in our lives. So let's talk about the day that the Holy Spirit was poured out to Jesus' disciples. Now he had told them, look, I'm going back to heaven, but the advocate that I promised is not coming immediately. In fact, I want you to go to an upper room and I want you to just spend some time praying. And we think that that time frame was almost 10 days or so because Jesus was alive for about 40 days and showed himself. And what is about to happen took place 50 days after he was resurrected. We call it Pentecost. Penta meaning five, like Pentagon, Pentagram, that kind of thing. So we're going to pick it up in Acts 2, verses 2 through 4. On the day of Pentecost, all the believers were meeting together in one place. It would have been the upper room. Suddenly, there was a sound from heaven like the roaring of a mighty windstorm. And it filled the house where they were staying. Then what looked like flames or tongues of fire appeared and settled on each of them. And everyone present, I want you to catch this, was filled with the Holy Spirit. And they began speaking in other languages as the Holy Spirit gave them this ability. You see, on that day when they were gathered in that room and they were praying and, and Jesus' promise came to pass, the Holy Spirit, the advocate, showed up. He showed up in a really supernatural, in a really powerful way. And it changed their lives forever. But it also gave the potential to change our lives forever as well. You see, we're living in perhaps one of the most difficult years that most of us have had to navigate. I mean, we have COVID. We have fires burning the western part of the United States. We have racism. We have an election year in which we are so incredibly politically charged right now. There's so much hate. There's so much protest. There's so much violence we're living in a really unique time in history where there are mountain size challenges in our world, in our workplace, in our kids' education, in our marriages. We're just facing mountains. And I think the importance of the Holy Spirit being poured out is the fact that we have dynamite power to work through the challenges in life. But you know what? So many of us sh settle for shovel power because this seems dangerous. This seems hard to wrap our minds around. This seems like it's difficult to navigate. And yet Jesus said, hey, this is the best thing that could ever possibly happen to you. I'm offering you dynamite power. And here's the deal. The challenges you face, I'm not necessarily going to take those challenges away. I'm not going to necessarily take you over the challenges. I'm not necessarily going to take you around the challenges. I've given you dynamite power because we're going to go through 
the challenges. We're going to burrow a tunnel right through. The Holy Spirit is going to be with you every step of the way. So now the question is, how do we tap into the power of the Holy Spirit? I mean, is he just sort of naturally built into our DNA? Do we need to do something? Uh, Does it just need to get the latest download? Um, Is it only available for a select group of people? How do we access this particular power? And in order to understand that better, we need to go back to that day of Pentecost. Now, we need to understand is we're about 50 days after Jesus' resurrection. And up until that moment, the disciples... Jesus' followers were absolutely scared to death of both the Jewish and the Roman leaders because they saw what they did to Jesus and they were pretty sure the same thing was going to happen to them. And so they weren't talking to anybody about Jesus. But the minute the Holy Spirit was poured out, he empowered them to talk about Jesus. And so Peter, the very same Peter who 50 days earlier denied that he even knew who Jesus was, now breaks out of that upper room and he comes out into a field right outside the upper room where there are hundreds and thousands of people in town that week to celebrate Pentecost. And he begins to talk to them about Jesus with this incredible boldness, this incredible power. And his message you can read in Acts 2, but it basically is this. This man named Jesus was the Son of God, and he came to earth, and he did miracles, and he died a death that he did not deserve. And then you buried him, and then he came back to life, and he's been hanging around for about 40 days. In fact, many of you have seen him. And this man was the Son of God, and you know what? You killed him. Now, this is another interesting aspect of the Holy Spirit. Not only is the Holy Spirit empower those of us who follow Jesus. But the Holy Spirit also draws those who don't yet believe to God. And as these thousands of people heard Peter preach with dynamite power, they said, oh my goodness, we killed the Son of God. What should we do? Now, as Peter responded to their question, he gives not only them, but he gives us the way to access the power of the Holy Spirit. He says this in Acts 2, 38. Peter replied, each of you must repent of your sin and turn toward God and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. When those things happen, Peter said, then you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. This is the life-changing message because it tells us that the Holy Spirit is available to everyone. Even those people who convicted Jesus, those people who put Jesus to death. I mean, what could be worse than that? And Peter goes, look, the Holy Spirit is even available to you. Power is available to you. You can be empowered with the same power that raised Jesus from the dead. So, How do we access that power? Well, let me tell you how we don't access it. And some of the things that Peter doesn't say. We don't access it by just showing up to church every week, or even every other week, or even occasionally. We don't access it by being a pretty good person. Peter didn't say that. We don't access it through reading the Bible. We don't even access it necessarily through prayer. Not that any of those things are bad. In fact, all of those things are really good, but they're not how we receive the Holy Spirit. Peter goes, look, there's only one way that we receive the Holy Spirit, and that's when we make a conscious decision. And the Bible word is a word we don't use very much in everyday English language. It's repentance. And whenever we run across a word in the Bible that the Bible uses frequently, but we don't use very frequently, I think it's, it's important to explain it. Repentance means that we turn from our sin and we turn toward God. And that involves a couple things. Number one, It requires us to acknowledge that we messed up. It it requires us to acknowledge and confess that we have sin in our life and that 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 sin is unacceptable to God and that, that it requires something on our part. And Peter said, when we confess our sin 
and we turn from that sin. We say, you know what? We're not going to do that anymore, but instead we're going to turn to God and we're going to receive forgiveness, not because we deserve it, but we're going to receive forgiveness because Jesus already paid for the sin on the cross and he conquered the power of sin when he came back to life. And now that same power is available to us. And here's the great news. You know, it used to be that if you had sin, you had to go tell someone. You had to go to the priest, you had to go to the pastor, you had to go to confession if you grew up Catholic. When Jesus died on the cross, he made it available that we can go directly to him. We don't have to go through another human being. You don't have to go through me. You don't have to go through one of our staff. We can go directly to Jesus with our sin and go, wow, I messed up. I want to turn from that and I want, I want the power that you offer. And because Jesus died on the cross, he now made a way possible for us to receive his forgiveness. So if you've never really made that conscious decision, if you can't look back on your life and at some point in time say, you know what? I made that decision. I confessed my sin. I asked for forgiveness. I received it and I received the Holy Spirit. And I'm going to tell you that churches across the world are full of people who faithfully come to church and faithfully attend and they may serve and they may give and they may do a lot of right things in their life, but they've never actually made the decision to repent from their sin and to receive forgiveness. If that's you today, the bad news is you don't have the Holy Spirit. You've been trying to work through life's obstacles with a shovel when you've got dynamite available to you. And I would never want you to continue to struggle through life's challenges with shovel power when you could have dynamite power. And so I want to close this today with a verse and a prayer. And I want to give you that opportunity, and I want to make it crystal clear how you can receive dynamite power today. And I want to close with this verse. It's Paul who wrote this in Romans 10, 9. He said, if you openly declare that Jesus is Lord, and you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. In other words, your citizenship at that point in time transfers from earth into heaven. Your eternity is secured forever with God, but probably equally important. You will receive the Holy Spirit, and with the Holy Spirit, you're going to receive dunamis, dynamite power, to go through any obstacle that you face. Let's pray. God, right now, I know that there's people listening to the sound of my voice who have never received this kind of power that we're talking about, who've never experienced the Holy Spirit dynamite power. And if that's you today, I would encourage you, you can pray right now to receive this power. And the prayer is very simple. It goes something like this. God, I've messed up. I've made mistakes in my life. I have sinned. I have fallen short of your standard of perfection. And today I recognize that. And God, I confess that sin to you. And I confess that I want to turn away from that sin. I don't want to do that anymore. The truth is, I need your help. And I want to turn to your power. I want to receive this forgiveness that you offer. And I want to receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, I invite you to come into my life. I invite you to come into my heart just like you were poured out on the day of Pentecost. And I pray that you would give me the power that it's going to take to work through life's challenges. I receive what you have for me today. And it's in Jesus' name, because he was the one who died for us, that we pray all of this. Amen and amen. If you're new to the faith and would like to know more about what it means to be a follower of Christ and to live your life in that way, or if you want prayer, click the link below and fill out the connection card. If you wish to live generously, you can give online by clicking the generosity link. Thank you so much for investing in what God cares about most people. If you'd like to further explore today's message, we would love for you to click on the link for discussion page where you'll find questions, scriptures, and other information designed to help you learn more about living as a follower of Jesus Christ. Tune in again next week for another great message. Have a great day.